now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. My next guest is a giant in the evangelical community. He is the pastor and founder of Saddleback Church in Southern California. And he's now collaborating with the Catholic Diocese of Orange to fight a proposed physician-assisted suicide bill in California. I sat down with him recently here in D.C. He spoke with me about the so-called Death with Dignity movement, the power of prayer, and just what does an evangelical pastor give up for Lent? Here's my exclusive interview with Rick Warren. Lent. Lent. Yeah. How are you preparing? How yeah. would you suggest others yeah. prepare during this period, these 40 days? Well, I think uh, leading up to Easter is a great time to focus on the internal life, our, our internal devotion uh, to Christ. And I think that involves both prayer and, uh, and Bible reading or Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it a daily quiet time where you sit and you, you you listen to God through His Word, mm. and you talk to God through prayer. Uh, you can sing to God through, through singing. Um, one of the things, you know, many years ago I wrote a book. In fact, the first book I wrote was called Bible Study Methods. Yeah. And uh, it's still in print years later in a mm. bunch of languages. And I, I talk about uh, when you look at a text, how do you get the most out of it? There are four questions I ask. One is uh, observation, and that is what does it say? I read a story and I go, what does it say? And then I do interpretation. What does it mean? What is the meaning of it? For instance, when Jesus says, I am the door, he's not saying I'm a piece of wood. Mm. Okay, what does it mean? What does he mean when he's saying, I am the door? Uh, and what does it say? Observation, interpretation, what does it mean? Correlations, what else in the Bible helps me understand this? You always interpret unclear passages in light of clear ones. Mm -hmm. What does it say over here that sheds light on this one? And then the fourth is application. What am I gonna do about it? And that's where we really see our life change in the application, what am I gonna do about it? What are you giving up for Lent? Are you? <laughs> I'm giving up dairy. I'm giving up uh, sugar. Oh my and Lord. I'm giving up grains. Anything uh, now, you're not giving up? Well, it, 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 <laughs> it fits on the Daniel plan, but it happens to really <laughs> be my, my giving up. It, it, I see a Lenten cross promotion. It, it, it actually gives me uh, a lot more energy and it allows me to focus better. It's pretty much, uh, you know, meat, meat and vegetables. Mm -hmm. no, but that, that sounds but good. It, I think it's actually good for us to, um, to make sacrifices, to What's remember the, the sacrifice People look of at that, you know, some people, I've had friends come up and say, I know you give this stuff up, but what does that do for you? Yeah, yeah. Couldn't you, couldn't you pray to God and have a communion with God without it? Yes, but I think it actually, it's kind of like turbocharging. Uh, it, it adds a little oomph to it. It goes, it's a reminder when my stomach sees some ice cream that I'd like to have and I go, you know what? Just remember what Christians are sacrificing all around the world right mm. now. Mm -hmm. Remember what our Lord did on the cross for us. Remember the sacrifices of, of great Christian believers and saints through history and the martyrs of history that preserved scripture. Okay, that means this is a minor thing by comparison, but it just mm -hmm. allows me to, uh, to, to it's, the Bible says that discipline is a good thing. Mm -hmm. How do you pray, particularly during this period? And what do you say to those who, and they say it all the time, Yes. Yeah. I've been praying for years for this thing. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, answer me. Yeah, right, right. Well, first place, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, you can not only pray it, it itself, you can use it as a model. Jesus said, this is the model you can pray. And so when he says, Our Father, this is the prayer of connection. Mm -hmm. And you talk about, and you think about, how am I connected to Christ? God is my Father. And, and then, hallowed be thy name. And, 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 and this is the prayer of holiness. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The prayer of surrender. Uh, give us this day our daily bed. The prayer for provision. Uh, forgive us our trespasses. The prayer of forgiveness and forgiving others. So the, the Lord's Prayer is not just a prayer to pray. It's a model for prayer. Mm -hmm. But I also, I, there's a little, somebody taught me years ago, a little acrostic, A-C-T-S. Oh. Everybody's heard this. It's great. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Mm -hmm. And so I start with adoration, thanking God, praising mm -hmm. God for who he is, adoration. Then confession, admitting to God who I am. Thanksgiving, thanking God and gratitude for all he's done. Mm -hmm. And supplication, making my request. Usually yeah. everybody runs to the S. Oh yeah, They absolutely. run right to the supplication, yeah, but forget you know what? the rest. I like it when, when my kids are small, they jump in my lap and they'd sit there and I'd say, what do you want, Amy? And she goes, I just want to be near you, daddy. Mm. 
And that's the way God wants us to come to him. That we're not always having a request. I just want to be near you, Father. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about something that's happening in your neck of the woods in California. Mm. There is this bill before the legislature to legalize physician-assisted suicide. Right, right. Given the path you've been on right. since your son's suicide yes. and the great efforts you've made to reach out to people with yeah. mental illness yeah. and, in, and in mental distress, right. is this bill going to help you in your work and help the people you've been serving? Well, I'm totally opposed to the bill uh, because I, I'm, I, I say I'm not just pro-life, I'm whole life, mm. okay? I don't want just that little baby girl to be born. Mm -hmm. I want her to grow up safe, secure, get a good education, not be raped, not be abused. Right. So I'm whole life. And whole life means even to the other end of life of opposing euthanasia. Mm -hmm. And there's such a slippery slope on this. Well, you know, we're, somebody who's terminal, you know, the Dutch have now basically said, if I feel like my life isn't worth it, right. then I can take my life. Sure, depression. Yeah, and, and so I'm opposed to physician-assisted suicide. First, it's the opposite of the Hippocratic Oath, which says, first, do no harm. Mm -hmm. The job of a doctor is preserve life, not to help take life. So that's nonsense. And uh, we are working with other uh, Christians and people of, of goodwill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in, in Orange County, uh, Saddleback Church took the lead on mental health yep. and the Diocese of Orange supported us in that. Mm -hmm. And now the Diocese of Orange is taking the lead uh, in opposing this bill and we're supporting them in that. In fact, I just met with uh, uh, Bishop Kevin Van mm -hmm. and the team there at the Diocese office on this very issue saying, you have our full support just like you're supporting us in the mental illness mm -hmm. cause because we, we believe this has to be dealt with. The Orange County Register just said, this is not physician assisted suicide, mm -hmm. is not a moral or a religious issue. Yeah. You would say what? Well, I'd say it, that's uh, a blindness. It, it's just not true because every issue is a moral issue. Mm -hmm. to, to say, anytime you talk about law, you have moral behind it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, put up a stop sign. There's, there's, there's a reason for that. And we believe that it's good that people don't get banged into. And so anytime you make any law, there's always a morality behind it. People say you can't legislate morality. Nonsense, every law is morality. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that relationship quickly between you and Bishop Van. This has been an interesting partnership yeah. based on a real relationship here. Well, it started off as a friendship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I believe in, in reaching out to other people, not just fellow Christians, but to people who aren't sure. believers, is you start, um, uh, you start with the, the hands and then you move to the heart and then to the head. In other words, what can we do together? In other words, I'm not really interested in debating uh, our doctrinal differences as much as saying, what do we have in common? And it first started off with uh, Bishop Van when he was installed as the new bishop. And I had known the two previous bishops and, and had been friends with them, Todd Brown and Norman McFarlane mm -hmm. uh, prior to that. And uh, I went to his installation and uh, I, I just met a man of great humility and great love and we fell in love with each other, became prayer partners. We actually text all the time. Mm -hmm. And on that, and when my son died, Matthew died, uh, Bishop Van called me and said, what can we do about this? Mm. And I said, well, let's, let's do a conference. And so we got University of California at Irvine involved. And now we actually put together a coalition of some hospitals in the area that are working on uh, childhood pediatric, psychiatric beds and mm. some things that weren't there. And a lot of good has come out of it. Mm. And we've just, uh, we're just dear friends. Join us for more of my conversation with Pastor Rick Warren on the March 26th edition of The World Over. He'll be joined by the director of Georgetown University's Religious Freedom Project, Tom Farr. We'll discuss religious liberty in the U.S. and abroad. You won't want to miss that.